filled up my water at uh, Guinea Brook. Looks like I made yet another mistake. Last time I was here, I backpacked as far south as 10 Mile River. This time, I'm gonna go north, uh, hopefully to Sharon Mountain, and that will close in the 15 mile gap of uh, AT trail I have here in Western Connecticut. First four miles of today's hike are gonna be relatively flat. We're gonna be on River Road, which uh, closely follows the Housatonic River here. After that, we'll start to gain some elevation. I'm starting a little late today, it's 12.30. I was thinking of doing 12 miles today, but the late start, most likely just gonna do about eight. This weekend, we're gonna do uh, two nights on the AT. Haven't decided exactly which shelters or campsites, but most likely between here at Kent and Sharon Mountain. I'll hit one or two of the middle ones, uh, one on the way up and one on the way back. And uh, gonna get cold tonight and tomorrow night. Probably gonna be in the 20s both nights, maybe as low as 23 tomorrow night. So I'm uh, packing some good warm weather gear, a few winter things with me. So my backpack weighs about 26 pounds with everything where my uh, base weight is probably around 19 pounds. The Housatonic River is approximately 150 miles long. Its origins are near the town of Pittsfield, Massachusetts, and it traverses the western side of Connecticut, Massachusetts, before draining into Long Island Sound at Bridgeport, Connecticut. The river's name is derived from a Mohican phrase that translates as beyond the mountain place or river of the mountain place. We're about a mile into the hike and we've come to the end of the, the river road. A little parking lot here for hikers. Interestingly, there's a former bridge over the Houstonic River. I see abutments on both sides. From this point forward, river road is just a footpath. Another three miles of the flat stuff before we hit the uh, climbs. So we've reached Stewart Hollow Shelter and just show you around a little bit. Looks like it's got the usual step in, like the rest of them, picnic table, see a privy over there, and a couple campsites. I bet this place is busy during the, the bubble. Place for your food scraps, a wash pit. Here's a map of the site. Looks like they have four tent sites here, and obviously you've got the brook for water. So it's uh, not a bad spot. Less than a mile away from uh, Stewart Hollow Shelter is the Stony Brook campsite. Looks like they have four sites, a chum privy, and uh, water here. And surrounded by beautiful fall foliage is the uh, privy. All the Connecticut shelters and campsites on the AT have bear boxes, which I think is awesome. So I only went as far as campsite two here. This looks like a nice big one, but it's a pretty good hike up the hill. I think there's two more, maybe one more campsite up the trail there, but I'm gonna turn around here. So we've been hiking for two hours. We got about four and a half miles in. Uh, temperatures when we started were around 53, 54 degrees. We're down to about 52. Winds have been pretty calm. It feels like they're starting to pick up. I know we're supposed to be getting some uh, cold tonight, so maybe the uh, front is coming in and that's why we're feeling the wind. The trail opens up in this field here and we can actually see Silver Hill in the distance, which is on the Appalachian Trail. There's a campsite there. Not sure if I'm gonna stay there or keep going to the next campsite. Uh, sunset is at 4.38 tonight and it's already 2.15, so we'll see how it goes.
I have to say that uh, so far, if not spectacular, certainly pleasurable. The section along the Houston River here is phenomenal. Houston is wide flowing, constant companion. You get views at this time of the year. Um, pretty smooth trail, it's a couple of muddy sections. Uh, no major water crossings, most of them have neat bridges, so uh, definitely a, a cool section of the Appalachian Trail, but now it's time to start gaining some elevation again. All right, according to this sign, we have the last water before Silver Hill campsite. I think Silver Hill campsite's a couple miles away. I still have another liter, so uh, I'm not gonna load up here. I'm gonna keep going till we get to Silver Hill. Probably get some water there. The Houston River is polluted with heavy metals from years and years of industrial use, both here and upstream further, especially PCBs from uh, GE and Pittsfield, Mass. So it's definitely not safe to drink the water from the Houstonic River. Well, the flat and cruisy surface has changed to steep and rocky for sure. Well, according to all trails, I've hiked 6.44 miles. It's my first time taking the backpack off. Feels pretty good. It's down to about 51 degrees. I would say the wind is still okay. We're on the side of Silver Hill, and I think it won't be long before we get to Silver Hill campsite. But uh, I needed a drink of water. I had to shift a few things around, so I took a quick break. My log is rolling under my butt. view of the summit of Bald Hill at 1,408 feet from the side of Silver Hill. We just reached Silver Hill campsite at about seven miles in today's hike. We're going to go and check it out and then decide whether this is home for the night or you move on to the next site. The campsite at Silver Hill was exceptional. It had a bear box, viewing platform, a swing, a kitchen pavilion, a privy, and a wash pit. Unfortunately for me, the hand pump was no longer in service, and I didn't fill up at the bottom of the hill. Really hate to leave this campsite, but the uh, water pump has been disabled. I guess I misunderstood the literature, otherwise it would have cameled up with water about a mile or so back. But I'm at the top of a hill. It's a mile either way to water, and then I have to come back up the hill. So I'm thinking about heading north to uh, Caesar Brook campsite. It's about four miles. It's like four o'clock right now, so definitely gonna be a little bit of night hiking going on here, but that's okay, I've done that before. We've reached the shoulder of Silver Hill, the summit's back there, but the Appalachian Trail doesn't go to the summit. It's a little bit treed in, but I think you can see a bunch of mountains. According to all trails, it's gonna be a steep descent all the way down to Route 4 before we start climbing again. Temperature's dropping, it's 34. I just uh, filled up my water at the Guinea River. The problem with the Guinea River is you can't cross it unless you get your feet wet. And uh, with the going below freezing tonight, that's not a good option. Looks like I made yet another mistake, so I've gotta do this bypass as I work my way towards the next campsite. We're uh, at the end of the bypass, we're gonna take the AT north here, about three miles to the Caesar Brook campsite. Obviously, this was not the way I planned it. Halfway between Breadloaf and Pine Knob. The trail's been pretty level once it got past the Breadloaf and the Mohawk Trail split off. So we gotta go up Pine Knob, and I think that's an 1,100 foot elevation. We're down around 770 right now, so there's definitely some more climbing coming. It's pretty dark out here. Well, it looks like we're uh, dealing with another problem. We have the AT washed out here at Hatch Brook. Gotta follow some flags to get around it. Well, we've reached the vista at Pine Knob. Hopefully, it's all downhill to the campsite. Should be a good view when I come back this way. All right, we've reached the junction of the Pine Knob Loop Trail and the AT. Finally, I made it to Caesar Brook campsites. First priority is probably gonna be eat, I'm starved, then set up the tent. Boiling water for chicken and dumplings. Here it is, Mountain House chicken and dumplings. Five minutes, stir it up, and eat some of this. Finished eating, tent set up, food is put away, cleaned up. 
Looks like it's 42 degrees out there. It's supposed to get colder. I think it's time to go to bed. I am tired. It was a long day. 12 or 13 miles, depending on which app you believe. Uh, that's a pretty good hike for me. I'll see you in the morning. The fun continues in part two as we unsuccessfully attempt to reach Sharon Mountain campsite. All is not lost as we make the most of another long day of backpacking on the AT.